Confessions of an ex-Disney cast member. Hi, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Jer. Today is officially two years that I have been separated from the Walt Disney Company, specifically at the Disneyland Resort in Southern California. I worked there for 10 years, but there was that pandemic break where I was furloughed for like a year. So technically it was nine, but like who's counting? I did my 10 years. I left right at 10 because I wanted it to feel symbolic. I was not about to be a Disney lifer. That was not for me. So today I wanted to share a bunch of stories that I have, and I just wanna be abundantly clear that I do not represent the Walt Disney Company when I make this video. I'm gonna try and be as vague as I possibly can because I don't want Disney to sue my ass. I'm also gonna be a little bit shaky about some details, especially when it comes to names because I don't want anyone to sue my ass. This will be a collection of both shady things, shifty things, things that were just funny. Know that if you are kind of sensitive towards knowing some of the behind the scenes things and the magic will be ruined for you because you're a weird Disney adult or something, then you should probably click out of my page. <laughs> <laughs> like right now. I've kept a very secret journal for the past several years. I started it maybe a couple years right before I left. These were some of the highlights that I held on to. So here's my context. I worked in foods for nine months. That was specifically at Clarabelle's. I worked at the wharf. I worked at the Bodine factory. There was Cocina Cucamonga and Lucky's Fortune Cookery. And I worked at all three of those restaurants and I moved over to the entertainment department where I did not perform as any characters. I was an attendant or a host as we were called. And then I became a lead in that department for the better half of about two years maybe before the furlough. When I came back, I was just regular because I didn't want to do lead anymore. I was kind of over it. And I think I had really, I had been away from the politics for so long that I just couldn't get myself back into it. It's a lot of mental juggling when you work at the Walt Disney Resort. The other thing I wanna say is working at Disneyland is very much like a cult. You feel like you have all these problems, but nobody talks about them. And it's a really weird environment because you're being happy and you're pretending that everything is fine, but you're not. I'm, it's a weird environment and you feel like you can't leave and you feel like if you do leave everybody's gonna be really weird to you also i realize my green screen is here right now but let's shuffle my camera so that's not in shot so number one i worked at clarabelle's and i opened up that restaurant which was really fun it was cool to be a part of some type of Disney history, some type of legacy of being a part of a new land. And specifically, I don't know if it's done anymore because the last time I visited was before I quit. There is this waffle cup that you could get from Clarabelle's and it used to have a Mickey face on it. That little Mickey face was my idea. We opened up the store thinking we were gonna be so busy because our managers and our leaders were like, it's gonna be crazy. Everybody's gonna wanna stop here and get ice cream before they go to the cars ride. And it's gonna be nuts. Nobody gave a crap about us. <laughs> Nobody came in and saw us until like maybe two weeks in. We had no business and we were doing 12 hour days. We were out barking, trying to get people to come into the restaurant and buy ice cream and nobody wanted it. Cause they were all waiting day and night for Radiator Springs Racers to open up. So we didn't see anybody. We were freaking alone in there. So we were playing like patty cake and we were drawing on the back of receipt paper. And I was very, very bored. We had to individually press the waffle cups. There was a machine that we had to do them with. And I stole a squirt bottle from back of house. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm going to draw pictures and nobody can stop me. And we had already like a squirt bottle that was already there, but I just took a little mini one and I started drawing little Mickey Mouse heads and cooking those on the waffle machine for a little while so that they'd brown up. And then I'd put the batter on top and I just, hide little Mickey heads. And one day a guest came up and said, hey, there's a Mickey head on this. And I said, oh yeah, that was me. And she said, that was really fun. 
He's like a little hidden Mickey in the ice cream. What are you doing? Look at what I found him doing. He was in our drawer full of bags. How did you get your head stuck in this? You're supposed to have cat instincts that prevent you from doing things like that. And your cat instincts are going a little sour, buddy. Well then. So I started doing that more and more and I started making them bigger and people would notice and they thought it was really fun. And one day, one of the chefs found out about it. And the chefs are kind of, they have a lot of control over the kitchen. I was off and the chef came in to inquire about it. And one of my leads that day was like, oh yes, yes, that was my idea. I green lit it. And I was told this the next day when I came back that, Four of my coworkers all said, uh, no, that was not your idea, that was Jer. And they all told the chef, Jer will be back tomorrow, come and talk to them then. And this lead apparently was all like butthurt that nobody allowed him to take credit for this. So the chef talked to me the next day, I came into my shift and one of the managers stopped me and was like, hey, the chef wants to talk to you. And I thought, oh crap, I'm in trouble because I've modified the recipe, and that's a big deal at Disneyland. I don't know why that matters, but like, you can't have fun, ever. And so I thought, okay, well I'm gonna get in trouble and I'm gonna be relocated out of here. And the chef said, this is such a cool idea, do you mind if I take this idea and have them design it into the actual waffle machine? And in my head I thought, well, why do you need my permission for that? This is the Mickey Mouse head. I didn't make anything exciting or new. I just put our branding into our food. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? I don't care. So he sent off this design, literally did a, a quick little Mickey Mouse sketch, I guess, sent that to the manufacturer and they sent a custom waffle press with the Mickey head on it. And up until the pandemic, I know that they were still printing that Mickey head. I don't know if it's still there, but it was a little hidden Mickey and that was me. This is not a bad one, but it's also not a fun one either. Number two, when I was working on Buena Vista Street as an entertainment host, we had leads that were there throughout the day, right? And there was what they called A, B, and C leads. So the A lead had like four days that were priority. They could choose whatever they wanted. The B lead got the other shift that the A lead didn't want. And then there was the C lead that took whatever was left that they wanted. And then all the other leaders that wanted shifts in that particular spot could pick them up. So the A lead was really upset about something and came to me about it. And just basically was shit talking to be in the C lead, non-stop venting. And I was just a cast member. I wasn't even a leader at the time, but they all knew that I wanted to be in leadership. So I think they were trying to gauge conflict resolution perhaps. So I just listened and I took it all in and I gave my advice where I could. So the B lead comes in the next day and says, hey, somebody told me that the A lead was walking around talking about me. Did you hear anything? And I said, well, they came to me and asked me about a situation and this is what I told them. You were brought up and your C lead was also brought up, but they weren't saying anything bad about you. They were just concerned about a, a decision. But this is really a conversation that you should be having with them. Oh my God, this is so inappropriate to tell someone who's not at your level of leadership. And I'm not the type of person that's gonna talk about you and not tell you. I'm gonna be upfront. I'm not gonna go out of my way and find you and say, hey, me and so-and-so were talking shit about you the other day. But if you find out, I'm gonna tell you to your face. I'm not gonna lie to you and talk about you behind your back. So the next <laughs> day three, the C lead comes to me and says, hey, I heard the A and the B are fighting with each other. <laughs> And for a while I thought this was an experiment that they were just testing to see what I would do in a feudal situation. But turns out it wasn't. All three of them hated each other and they were not seeing eye to eye on things. So I became the mediator between three leaders. And when I tell you this kind of thing happened all the time. There were times where I as a lead had to mediate between two managers that were feuding. Not even that I had to be in the room with them, but that one manager would come in and be talking smack about one another one. And then that manager would come and say, hey, have you heard anything? I just want to know what's going on. And then I'd have to get them to talk to each other. I don't know why Disney leadership 
is so inept at what they do. But that, I think, is a universal truth. Oh, number three. I was working in Mickey's house, and I was with the mouse himself, and we had this family come in. They were so weird. And they had this maybe 16, 17-year-old daughter, and she was seemingly very average. Just to be blunt, nothing seemed neurodivergent of this person at all. They seemed perfectly neurotypical. They were just conversing with Mickey Mouse, but then they were trying to see into the, the mouth. And if you know anything about anything regarding character heads, you might have an idea what I'm talking about and what I'm referencing here and why this person would try to be looking up the mouth. Mickey kept jolting away and wouldn't let her look into the mouth. And the Mickey performer was being very careful and was just trying to reset boundaries and make sure that no magic was spoiled. And this girl kept trying and turned to us and said, is Mickey not real? And we looked at each other, me and the photographer in the room like, what do you mean? He's right there. Of course Mickey's real. What are you talking about? He's he's a cool dude. He's in all the films, whatever we said. We were improv we were having fun. And then this girl tried looking again and said, but I want to I want to see if Mickey's real. And we both looked at each other again and we're like, but he is real. And the Mickey tried to hug her and was like, yeah, I'm I'm real. What do you mean? And she started crying. And her family was like, all right, come on, let's go. Let's leave, because they had already taken photos. And this girl kept trying to look into the mouth and was just sobbing and turns to us and says, Mickey's not real, Mickey's a person. And the parents were like, come on, let's go. We got things to do. Not caring that their daughter is now in hysterics over believing that Mickey is a person in a suit. This is not funny. <laughs> and then her, I think boyfriend, because he was holding her hand, was like, come on, babe, it's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it, let's just go. And she's like sobbing, tears rolling down her face, like Mickey's not real, Mickey's just a person. I, I, I saw Mickey, like I know that Mickey's not real. We didn't really know what to do, so we were just like, have a good day, <laughs> get out of here, please. <sighs> and that reminds me, number four, during my training in the entertainment department, when we went into Mickey's house, we went into the break room, and one of the Mickey performers was coming down, because it's theater, we have rooms that we take our breaks in, and this person was coming down the hallway. I just have to show you. Standing in the hallway, they go, ooh, new hires. <laughs> and on the wall behind us were all the costume pieces, including multiple things that Mickey performers might wear. And this trainee that was with me all day who was talking about the magic of Disney and how she had been such a Disney fan and how she was a Disney adult and she couldn't wait to make magic for all the little kids and work with all these great characters. Looks like surprised Pikachu face at this Mickey who is gyrating in the middle of the hallway, looks at all of the Mickey heads along the wall and starts crying hysterically sobbing. This is a 20 something year old person. And this person is crying so hard that the magic's been ruined for her and how she doesn't think she can do it anymore. That she was so excited to do the job, but now this moment may have ruined everything for her. And when you're in theater, no matter what it is, you have to kind of understand that a lot of the illusion is going to be shattered. If you go into a production of Wicked somewhere, you're going to find out that the girl who's playing Alphaba is not really green, that she's not really defying gravity, that there's pulleys and ropes, and things to hoist her in the air. There are people on stage who are moving set pieces around. You're gonna find out the way that the sausage is made. And some people can't handle that cognitive dissonance. What their reality is and their perception of the situation is so strong, they can't see anything beyond that. So when it comes time to look behind the curtain and find out who the wizard really is, that it's just some old dude behind a curtain pulling levers, that makes people's brains explode. And I think this girl in this moment I think her whole universe shattered because she left and we didn't see her again. 
A lot of people can't handle that, finding out things about Disney. They can't handle finding out truths. They're very sensitive souls. There's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're a young adult. Take your time to grow up. Not everything is what it seems, especially in the world of entertainment and of theater. Oh my God, I forgot about that one. I can't share that one. Number five, one time I got ringworm while at work and I knew that it was from work because I had only been in one area that apparently two other people had gotten ringworm from that week. So I went to the on-site health doctors and at Disney, there's something called Cast Health. Cast Health is essentially an offshoot of HR. They're real doctors with real certification, I believe, maybe, but they're not following what real doctors would do, which is to cure you. They are there to protect Disney and the company. They are there to protect HR first. So if you get hurt at work, they are the first line of defense to say that you're lying so that the company doesn't have to help you at all. They put you on certain duties that restrict how much you can do so that you don't get worse so that Disney can, without a shadow of a doubt, say, no, we did everything we could have done. If you got further hurt, that was your fault, bestie. Sorry that you got smushed by the trolley cart. That was your fault for standing in the middle of the walkway and you should have known better. Sorry that you breathed in toxic fumes and now you are vomiting. And so it's basically like the first line of defense to make sure that HR is protected. And I got ringworm and I went to them and they told me that I was lying about me getting it at work. They made me pay for my own personal care from my own money. And a couple of days later, I found out that three other people in the exact location I was at all had ringworm. And we kind of determined that it was from probably bacteria on one of the seats that a lot of us were using. And I went back to them and I said, so hey, I found out that there were multiple people that all got ringworm. What y'all gotta say about that? Can I get my money back? And they basically said, oh, you're, you're lying. Nobody else had it. You gotta go. And kicked me out. Disney is shady about that shit all the time. I had a really good friend who got scabies and he knew that he got it from one of the character costumes. Two of his coworkers who shared the same costume all got scabies and all three of them went to HR together and were like, so all three of us have it and we all did the same role. So we got it here, besties. And Cast Health was like, okay, well, we're gonna give you some paid time off. We're gonna give you a couple of weeks and we're gonna just pay you out and you stay home. And they buried it. <laughs> All the time where little medical things happen, people get hurt, people get sick. There's little outbreaks of things. There was one very famous outbreak of crabs and everybody started talking to each other about how they got crabs. Disney tried really, really, really hard to make sure they weren't liable. But when you have a super spreader of crab lice, you kind of have to do something about that. And it also calls into question why they aren't cleaning the costumes correctly. Okay, so six, and this will probably be my last one because we're getting a little lengthy here. This is gonna end on a high note. Years ago, the stormtroopers used to walk around in Tomorrowland. This was before Galaxy's Edge got built and they were like the old classic stormtroopers. There were these two dudes that I used to work with every now and again. I didn't get the Tomorrowland shift often because it was one particular cast member who worked it all the time, but I would work it occasionally. And we would go through the line and it was fun. We would interact with everybody that was there and everyone would freak out and they'd be like, oh my God, it's the troopers. These two dudes who were there all the time started messing around with some safety things. And I heard multiple different versions of the story, so I won't perpetuate any rumors. And while Star Tours couldn't necessarily kill you if you press the wrong button, it certainly just would not be a good idea if you don't know what you're doing to be pressing buttons. So the entertainment department got banned from Star Tours permanently. And we were told that we could never go back in there. So years and years and years later, I was a lead at Star Wars Launch Bay where we had Darth Vader, Boba Fett, sometimes Captain Phasma, and occasionally Rey. This was right after Galaxy's Edge had opened. So all the Star Wars interest was up there, but I was trying to keep our little corner of the woods alive with interest. So I went out of my way and I found the Star Tours management team. And I poked around and I said, hey, I'm just a little lead in the entertainment department. And I really would love if we could have Boba Fett go on your ride again. We used to do it years ago with the Stormtroopers and there was a safety concern. And I would really like to be the mediator to make sure 
that that does not happen again, that our expectations are very clear for our performers, but also to activate your ride and have a little more excitement for your guests and keep our little section of Star Wars ignited here. Everybody's really excited about Galaxy's Edge and they forget that Star Tours is here, that Launch Bay is here. And we're a big part of the Star Wars history in this resort. So can we? what can we do to work together? The management team was super chill. There were two in particular. One dude and one gal that I worked with quite frequently. They were very, very sweet. And I, I very much enjoyed working with them. I hope that they're still there because they seemed like good managers to me. And we collaborated together and I roped in my management and at Disneyland, the kind of long-standing unspoken rule is that you ask for forgiveness later and you just do stuff and hope that you don't get in trouble. So don't ask for permission if you work at the resort. <laughs> just do stuff, especially if you think it's the right call. So I went to my management team and I was like, hey, I've been working with the Star Tours management team and we've been chit-chatting and they would really love to have Boba Fett and Captain Phasma in the queue, what do you think? And my management team said, oh, well, years ago we got in trouble, so we're not allowed to do that anymore. And I said, yeah, 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 I understand. I've been talking to them and we've already set up some lines of communication and they're willing to give us a shot if we can give them a solid plan of what we wanna do. Can I do this? And my manager was like, well, I have to talk to my boss about it. And I said, oh, don't worry. I already set up a meeting with her. <laughs> so that day I was like, Hey, girly pop, I would love to do this. And she was like, well, it seems that you've done all the groundwork. So if you can come up with a good proposition and you can guarantee that we are not going to get excommunicated by this department again, I'm down. It seems like a good idea to collaborate with other lines of business. It seems like you are doing exactly what we want you to do, which is to be proactive and find new solutions and find new experiences for our guests. So I said, cool, thanks. I'll try it. So we ran some tests for, I wanna say a good month. And everyone would come by and say, I heard that we're doing this. I heard that the these characters can go up there now. And everyone would always reply, we're only allowed to do it while Jer is here. Because my hands were firmly on that wheel. I had done all the legwork and I was determined to be the only one who had the authority on that particular decision because I didn't want anybody to take my idea. I repaired this long-standing frustration with the attraction department and the entertainment department. And I wanted to be the one that was holding onto those reins. So I led this test for like a month. Management came by and were watching, specifically the two that I had been working with in the attractions department. They were super chill. They loved everything about it. My managers loved it. And we got it greenlit. And for months until the pandemic closure happened. Boba Fett and Captain Phasma would meet people in the queue and just chat with them. And we would circle through the whole thing. And sometimes when the guests would come out from the car, they would see them there and they would just sort of direct them. We weren't allowed to stop or take pictures or anything. We had to just wave to them, tell them to move on. And then they would just keep going along their way and the stormtroopers were just patrolling. And it was this really cool extra thing that we got to do that hadn't been done in years. And much like the waffle cone scenario, it was one of those things that I was just really proud to be able to do and to be able to say that I had accomplished something because it's hard to make changes. The Walt Disney Company very much operates in the, well, we've always done it this way, so why would we do it differently mentality? And it was nice to feel like I changed something, even if it was just for a little bit. So those are my cast member confessions, fun random stories from my time at the Walt Disney Company. Being away from it all, I can appreciate so much more because I'm not inundated in the drama or the politics or the culture of Disney. And there was a lot that I think it taught me as a person and what my boundaries were, what I could and could not do. And it made me a better person, despite the many, many, many bad things that happened and the many problems that I had at that company just with how politics run there. If you have questions, you wanna see more of these, I would be so happy to do more because it's nice kind of reminiscing. I will say that I do have a lot of stories that might not be so positive, but I have just as many good ones muddled in there, I think. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy gaming and drag race content, this is the channel for you. I don't really focus too much on Disney stuff anymore. Every once in a while, maybe. Hopefully, see you on the flip.
Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to click that like button. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Goodbye.